Hi coaches, we're going to talk about the shape we're going to play now. This shape is fundamentally the shape that every Sydney Grammar team will be using from the prep all the way up. Uh, it's going to be the first year that we're, we're, we're introducing the shape, so there's always going to be some teething problems with that. The opens are, are familiar with this now in a practical sense, the 16s are starting to embrace it, and we'll be doing stuff with the prep school. Um, we're calling it Scopen, we want to give a visual cue to our, to our players, but also for us as coaches. Um, the shape indicates how our forwards will shape up during general play. So we've got our two pincers and we'll refer to them as pincers. That's our, our one three here and our one three there. I've deliberately put these numbers to represent geographically where they will be. And I'll talk about that in a second when we get into some more uh, discussions around how we transition into this shape, this one three three one shape from a set piece play. So our set piece plays don't change. We still have our tires hard, our tires soft, our reds, and we'll discuss um, an, an additional play, which will be called Rebels, but that'll be in, a, in another video. So if we move forward now, um, I'll just go through a scenario-based um, demonstration explanation now that will probably make it easier to understand um, how, how it indicates where our forwards go and how we transition. So if we just start off from a basic uh, either scrum and or a lineup uh, from sideline, and we'll talk about also transitioning from a, from a centre field scrum, but in essence, if we were to play a Taz hard, which as we know is an exhaust pattern, we want to be getting to this area of the field. So it's very simple how we do that. We'll come off our box shape, which we've all been working on. Our box shape will make a play. Just, well, just a note on this, I want to make sure that we try and get as much width as possible as we can on our box shape. Let's say for example, we just run a Dragons here, and 12 takes it into contact. That's going to be our first phase there. Who's going to be in this contact? Our 12 will be in this contact. Our 14 always trails for the first tackle contest, so our 14 will be in here. And yeah, whether it's the back of the line out, uh, whichever back row our 6, 7 or 8 is going to be there, normally it's going to be our 7 is in this tackle contest. Because remember in this tackle contest now, we're only having ball carrier blast and bronco. So if we follow this along now, we've got to our first phase. And depending on whether it's a scrum or line out, will now dictate as to who is coming around the corner. So we want to exhaust when we come around the corner. If this is a line out and the line out goes to the back of the line out, our non jumping lifting pod will be the people coming around the corner. If it was a line out and it's at the front, our non lifting jumping pod at the back would be coming around the corner. If this was a scrum, our four, five, and our remaining back rower would be the people coming around for this next phase. And then if it was the second phase, which we'll talk about in a second, it will be our, our front row there. Hopefully, that's quite self explanatory. So let's follow now chronologically what's going to happen. These guys are going to come around the corner. Nine times out of ten will be off nine, and they're going to go into tackle contest two. And if let's imagine now we're using our scrum as our example, we should now have four, five, and six are in this tackle contest now. As this tackle contest is occurring, number seven is going to make his way over to that side of the field because he's going to become the one. Okay? So we're coming around the corner again, and again, it's probably going to be off nine, and this is now going to be a one, two, three from the scrum. They're going to go into tackle contest three. One, two, and three will be there. So as I slowly take away these illustrations, we still want to get to this area of the field. Now this is the change. This is how Scorpion changes, how 1331 changes what we did last year. Last year, we would expect this same pot of fours to get up again and go around the corner one more time. We're not going to do that. We're going to now ask our 10, 13, 15 winger, and our now sevens down here. Our eight is going to be told to come from either the scrum or the line out. If he's not needed in an emergency situation in either this tackle contest to assist or Dick is this tackle contest to assist, our number eight from a scrum scenario would get himself over here and become this one. Alright, let's just get rid of that. It's getting a bit busy now. We go into a tackle contest here. We play rugby here, we play Waikato, we play draw and pass, we play a dragon, we play a switch, we play whatever we want. And we try and attack this area of the field. Tackle contest four. Now remember three is the magic number we've always talked about. So what happens on this three as four is occurring? And this is how we transition into our one, three, three, one. These players here, one, two, and three, they will just reload. Alright? So they've, they've won the ball, they've got around the corner, they've done the hard yards. They are now going to reload. As they're reloading, the four, five, and six who were here have also now reloaded. Okay? So by reloading, we now have one, two, three, 
four, five, six, three, three, just on the edge or on this other side of the posts. About the 15 meter line is where they're geographically going to be patient up the field. If we think about in channels. Our ones, our seven and our eight, have the ability to roam half of the field. They get into a tackle contest if, they, if we need an extra blast, or they get into the back line and attack, and same for this side here. How do we come off a sideline? Well, we always know to come off a sideline with a white. So we'll get pass, we'll get pass, and then these guys are going to contact, and we've got tackle contest number five. These guys now are in a position to support whatever now happens, because now what we can do is, if we wanted to, we could play nine to these guys to take it up, tackle contest six, we could play nine to these guys who get up from the ground, they reload back into position, and we could play on a, almost like a pistons up and down. While we're doing this, while these pincers are attacking the defensive line, we can extend them. We could have them playing a white. So there's nothing saying these guys can't take the ball into contact, tackle contest five or six. And we could, if we wanted to, just have these three guys go out of it. Why, we, why would we do that? We'd want to do that to extend and stress the defense and maybe get some more ability to go in the middle. Why would we go off nine all the time? We'd want to condense the defense, which then allows our tail, our major attacking weapon, to exploit whatever space is down the side. What does this rely on? It relies from good communication, understanding of roles and responsibilities. It also relies on our mind listening to communication and our 10 deciding, do I want my pincers to continue attacking or do I want to bounce out, come here, have my attacking line out here because we've condensed the defense, we've condensed the defense, there's now opportunities here, I can bounce out and my back line can now attack using my Kato, catch pass, dragons, all the different things, switches we've talked about. The key element to all of this, coaches, is how we transition from set piece, so Taz soft, Taz hard rebels, reds, into getting into our one, three, three, one shape. And the only way you're gonna do that is by running scenarios like this multiple times with your age groups.